This Saturday afternoon, I'm going to be attending the Kentucky Free Thought Convention in Lexington, Kentucky, and I'll be watching Heath give a talk about how to win Thanksgiving against your racist uncle. That should be fun. But unfortunately, it means I'm going to have to miss the roving band of prayer warriors that are slated to lurk the streets of my hometown that day. So, yeah, that's a real thing. Welcome to fucking Georgia. My wife comes across this the other day on a neighborhood Facebook page, and it starts with this lady going like, hey, if you see big groups of people out in front of your house uttering magic spells to an invisible wizard, don't call the cops on us. And then she follows it up with an excerpt from her church bulletin that reads in part, quote, at 10 a.m., we are asking that you meet us right here at such and such a church where we will break out into groups and go throughout the city of Waycross to pray. We know prayer is powerful and we are expecting God to do some incredible and amazing things over the next six months as we pray over our city. So, you know, I got all these incredible and amazing things to look forward to when I get home, and that's nice. I mean, I'll, I'll still be coming back to a town where the average household income is under 26 grand and it has crippling levels of unemployment and the average educational attainment is however many highlights magazines they had at the clinic. But at least now all that will be tempered by this amazement and incredibility that they've promised. I mean, can you even imagine a more worthless use of volunteer labor? How about you guys go out and feed the hungry or Find people working outside, offer them a Gatorade, or pick up some garbage, or hell, lay down some garbage, right? At least then there'd be a sign you were there. You'd be justifying some municipal employee's job, maybe. But no, you guys are going to get together, walk around, and arrogantly wish. And you're not even going to wish for good shit, right? Just vaguely good stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've lived in this town on and off since I was a kid and expecting good things to happen here over any time span isn't exactly playing the odds, but you'd still think they could manage a goal a tad less ambiguous, right? I mean, maybe pray for more jobs, lower rates of cancer deaths, a single fucking day where the high temperature doesn't crack 90, but no, they're going with amazing things so that Six months from now, when no appreciable difference has been made by their efforts, somebody can point to a rainbow and say, look, y'all, God heard us. I mean, they're all but admitting they don't believe in this shit right there in the church bulletin, aren't they? Here's the sentence, right? They go, we know prayer is powerful and we are expecting God to do some incredible and amazing things. But, but if you knew that prayer was powerful, you wouldn't say that, right? When somebody says, I believe what I'm telling you right now, you can go ahead and assume they don't. Nobody's ever said, yeah, I can give you a ride. We all know that internal combustion engines are based on sound physics, so I'll be there in 15 minutes, right? Because like, when you know things are true, they're just baked right into the language. But not so with religion, damn it. And of course, this is hardly unique to Christians. I noticed this same bullshit back when I was into all the neo-pagan stuff, too. Once in a while, I get invited to these big congregations at communes where like several covens would be coming together to do a big spell. And the goal of these spells were always every bit as vague and banal as the goals of Waycross's prayer warriors. They'd be doing a spell to push the world closer to peace or to see deeply into our inner selves or whatever. Never to make this die roll a 6.33% of the time, mind ya. Of course, when you claim to have magic powers or a bat phone to somebody who does, once in a while you're going to be called upon to actually use your magic powers to do a specific and quantifiable thing. Right? Like at some point, one of the numb nuts who signed up to be a wandering prayer warrior this weekend is going to have a medical problem, or their spouse will, or their kid will, and then they're going to turn to whoever organized this nonsense and ask them to use that magic for them. Then, all of a sudden, out of the blue, all those preambles about how powerful they know prayer is are going to start to just melt away, and in their place, you're going to find warnings about how, well, you know, God does have a plan. Or you'll, you'll hear caveats sneaking into the prayers themselves. They'll start like, Lord, if it is in your will. right? And of course, invariably, when the goal of the prayer is measurable, the prayer fails. And everybody knows that going in, which is why they don't pray for measurable shit. It's also why nobody's all that shocked when the kid everybody was praying for dies anyway. I mean, sure, there are people who actually think the prayer is going to work, but they're few and far between. Most people watch it fail over and over again as they pray over their doomed loved ones or their daughter's relationship or their son's job prospects or their own finances. And despite its unblemished track record of failure, they play along when somebody at church suggests they go around and pray for the town every weekend for the next six months. I mean... I get that this is mostly just a social thing, right? It's like board game night, but for people even more boring than me. It's an excuse to get together with your friends from church, 
get in a healthy walk, maybe grab some lunch. And in that sense, great, have fun, do it. But the critical difference is that when me and my buddies get together to play board games, we're perfectly aware that we're engaged in an entirely self-indulgent act. And when something good happens in our town five months later, none of us are going to pat each other on the back and then claim credit for it because we kicked so much ass at pandemic in September.